<laughs> oh, good evening and Merry Christmas. Uh, this is Mike, your organist, and uh, thanks for joining us on this Christmas Eve. On a still night, a calm evening in a manger, this prelude is called From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being with us tonight. It is a sacred night, and yet how strange, how strange it is to not have a full house in a sanctuary or perhaps to not be with the loved ones that we usually are on a night like this. I'd like to think that what has happened is all the fluff that has nothing to do with really the birth of Christ has been taken from us. And we are put in this sacred place to focus on what it really means. Let us worship God together. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded. For with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descendeth, our full homage to demand. King of Kings. Yet, born of Mary, on earth he stood, Lord of lords, 
in human vesture. In the body and the blood, he will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food. Rank on rank, the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way as the light of light descendeth. From the realms of endless day that the powers of hell may vanish as the shadows clear away. At his feet, the six-winged seraph, cherubim with sleepless eye, veil their faces to the presence, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Alleluia! 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 Lord Most High, Our first reading comes from Luke 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now please join the LPC choir in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Stay muted, turn the volume up, and allow the LPC choir to lead us in singing, Hark the Herald. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, 
they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Our sermon tonight is called Responding to Light. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this eve, when we celebrate the light coming into this world and into our lives and into our hearts, what word do you have for us tonight? Amen. So have you ever been the one who gave the gift at some party and it was the hit of the party? I'm going to tell you a short story. I must have been six, five, and we had gone all the way from North Dakota to San Diego, California to be with all the family. And so it was Christmas morning, and of course, I was on the ground by the tree with all the other little people, and surrounding us on all the couches and chairs were, you know, 20 other people, all the adults, uncles and aunts and cousins. All of a sudden, I hear my mother screech. She screamed. And of course, we all look. She had just opened up the gift that my father gave her that Christmas. So in slow motion, we look. And mom has screamed. And up comes one of the uncles. And he picks up, of course, one of the toy rifles that's already been opened. And he says, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll kill it. I'll kill it. And then, of course, we all laughed. What was it? It was a mink coat. It was the hit of the party, so to speak. Of course, these days, we are much more aware and sensitive about wearing furs in general. But it was it's one of the most striking times for me where a, a gift was so incredibly surprising. When we receive gifts, there are a few different ways that we can respond, of course. Might be delight. It might be surprise. When we're little and we've already, we already know the routine, when I open my eyes, I can run to the living room and there's going to be stuff I'd never seen there before. That was the tradition in our family. Other times, the way that we respond to the things that we receive, gifts might stoke a little nervousness in us or put us in an adventure, adventuresome kind of space. That might be you're only 17 and you just got your new car. Now, that's amazing, but it's also kind of daunting because now you have to be responsible and pay for this thing. Sometimes gifts don't work very well. Maybe they arrive broken, or they get boring soon. And of course, we've all talked about kids, how the boxes, the gifts came in, became the things that they played with the most that day, because you can create with boxes. 
As we have walked through the calendar towards Christmas as a culture, as well as Christians, this idea of preparing and bringing gifts, whether it's a secular or spiritual kind of experience, they're very similar. When we are looking for Christmas in our secular culture, we are saying, oh, how many shopping days are left, right? And if we are following our um, traditions in the, in the church, we are during Advent. And again, there's preparation. It's spiritual anticipation. It's waiting and it's longing. And finally, the day comes. It's a day of receiving and responding to the gifts, yes, that may have been mailed to us or handed to us. But there are also gifts, the greatest gift that we celebrate tonight. In the Christmas story, the biblical characters, I just want you to use your imagination and think of the various characters, as I call their name, and what their response was to this Jesus Christ being born. Mary, Joseph, Elizabeth, the shepherds, Simeon, Anna, the Magi, Herod. While I did my own thinking about this, Mary, Joseph, and Elizabeth, I decided some good words for that is wonder and surprise and courageous. The shepherds, joy, and they had this impulse to go find it, go seek it. And when they found it, they shared it. Impulse. Simeon and Anna, the two older people who were at the temple, for them, it was incredible satisfaction and gratitude. The Magi, they had an impulse to seek it. They also had the impulse to protect it when they learned of Herod's plan. And the final character I mentioned was Herod, who perceived a threat, and the impulse was to stop it or kill it. So what about us? Can we receive the gift of God's light more deeply into our life and into our hearts tonight? Is there wonder or courage that that brings up in you? Is there satisfaction? Do you have the impulse to seek or to share or to protect the light? Sometimes we feel like, well, it's a nice story, but I've got real life situations I need to attend to. That's usually when we don't recognize the light. The gift doesn't work like it was supposed to. I don't like the way the gift works. So we put the gift on the shelf, perhaps. One more story about gifts. I happen to like fruitcake. I love fruitcake from one place. It's a place in Texas. The best fruitcake in the world. And I hadn't tasted it since I was probably 12 or 14. Someone brought it to church one day, and I was like, oh, that's it. That's the brand. I thought I would never know. So now I have found my special fruitcake. Well, there are so many fruitcake jokes, aren't there? What is it about that? And like, people don't like fruitcake. So I have learned that if you're going to bring something to a Christmas party, if you bring a fruitcake, it might just sit there, right? Um, it's kind of a you never know what the reaction is going to be. I wonder if that's the case for Jesus coming into the world. Not sure what the reaction is going to be when people hear the story. Sometimes it's because of the way they've heard the story. That doesn't sound like good news to me. Which is why I often ask us here at LPC, what is the good news to you? What is the good news? What is the light? In closing, I have a poem for you all about the light. And as I read it, I'm going to ask Terry to show that image again. The name of the poem is How the Light Comes, and it's by Jan Richardson. 
I cannot tell you how the light comes. What I know is that it is more ancient than imagining, that it travels across an astonishing expanse to reach us, that it loves, that it loves searching out what is hidden, what is lost, what is forgotten, or in peril. It loves searching out that which is in pain, that it has a fondness for the body, for finding its way toward flesh, for tracing the edges of form, for shining forth through the eye, the hand, the heart. I cannot tell you how the light comes, but that it does, that it will, that it works its way into the deepest dark that enfolds you, though it may seem long ages in coming, or arrive in a shape you did not foresee. And so, may we this day turn ourselves toward it. May we lift our faces to let it find us. May we bend our bodies to follow the arc it makes. May we open and open more and open still to the blessed light that comes. We come now to the time in our service when we are invited to give our lives to Christ. That was awesome. We're coming to the point in our service now where the tradition of lighting the Christ candle will occur. And I just want to give you a little instruction as to how we're going to do it. So we're about to hear a reading, and it'll be the reading from John 1. And after the reading, you will hear the choir start to sing. And I invite you, those of you out in Zoom land, to think about what you could possibly turn on. Maybe you have a candle to light for the Christ candle, or perhaps go turn on the Christmas tree lights. Maybe you wanna run all over the house and just turn every light on in the house. Whatever you have available to bring the light in. So let us prepare to light the Christ candle.
Our next reading comes from John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. Let us stand in our bodies or in our hearts. And I invite you, if you're out in Zoom, to turn on your gallery view. And I'm going to do that in the sanctuary right now for us who are here. And as you look at those faces, do you see the light? Do you see the light of Christ in them? Because in every single one of us, it is there. Friends, go knowing that the God of the nativity, the God who made us, has made us powerful beings. Beings that are full of light. And we are the light of the world. Go into the world knowing this. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Now, please join the LPC choir in singing Joy to the World. Stay muted and sing our closing hymn with LPC choir, Joy to the World. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.